I am sorry for our improper management, and I truly appreciate your assistance, General. There is no need to apologize. We Cloud Knights fight on the battlefield while you judges punish the criminals. We are two sides of the same Sienjul Law Fu, and it is my honor to serve the Ten Lords Commission. I've grasped the situation of the prison break. Now tell me more about the current state of the Shackling prison. Borison infiltrated the prison in disguise and released the prisoners, spreading chaos. Among the judges on duty in the four divisions, Judge Shui from the Detention Division was killed and is temporarily unavailable. So, I'm taking over her duties and commanding Arumaton Spectral Envoys and Spiritfarers to quickly restore order in the affected areas. I and the two behind me will go deeper into the prison to investigate. But, General... The situation inside is still chaotic and perilous. Your presence would be... It's common for Cloud Knight Generals to face danger directly. Hule has escaped, and the Yao Qing envoy is being held hostage by the Borison. His fate is unknown. This is a grave matter. Not only did the Merlin's Claw offer no reproach, she decided to go after Hule herself to prevent further calamity. I believe the Law Fu owes her something in return for her fervent determination. How did the Infiltrators learn about the location where Hule was held? And how did they time their plan just before the Yao Qing messengers were ready to escort him? Finding the answer to these questions shouldn't be too difficult. What truly matters is if we can gather the clues that lead us to the mastermind behind all of this. I understand. But I'm afraid it won't be an easy task. For a long time, this hidden force has been pursuing their own goals and undermining the security of the Law Fu. Backing down now will only encourage them to further endanger the peace here. The Ten Lords Commission will support your decision with everything we have, General. Dan Hong and Ling Sha, I'll need both of you to accompany me on this challenging journey. Well, it's part of my responsibilities as the Cauldron Master. So, where would you like to start, General? Let's start with those Borisin disguised as Foxians. My people have already prepared the evidence. According to Lieutenant Yenching's report, he stumbled upon a few suspicious Foxians at Stargazer Navalia. After following them, he discovered that they were actually Borisin in disguise. This is one of the bodies. Looking at him now, it's hard to imagine how he transformed into a Foxian. My alchemist detected some... complex ingredients in his remains, which might explain how these Borison were able to disguise themselves as Foxians. Simply put, Foxians and Borison share a common ancestry. Although they look completely different now, there isn't much genetic difference between them. This medicine allows Borison to temporarily change their shape into that of Foxians. So, in other words, if they stop taking the medicine, their true form will soon be revealed? Indeed. This means that these Borison have a steady supply of the medicine within the Lafu. The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Looks like the Alchemy Commission is involved once again. Hmm. When I was sorting through the prescriptions they use, I came across one called Semblance Reversion Essence. It's designed to help those Disciples suppress signs of their Maristruck forms and maintain their normal appearance. When I compared it to the medicine found in the Borson's body... They're one and the same, aren't they? The medicinal properties and ingredients may differ, but the principle remains the same. Since ancient times, the Borison have always sought to have more powerful bodies, regarding the Foxians as weaklings. Yet, in order to save their warhead, they were willing to disguise themselves as Foxians. Their determination is quite remarkable. 
If these infiltrators rely on the medicine to maintain their disguise, then following this lead in our investigation seems prudent. Please follow me! Here we are. According to the judge, this area is not yet under control, so we should proceed cautiously. I've captured the nature of the medicine in my sensor. By following the medicinal fumes, we should be able to retrace the steps of the disguised Borison. <gasps> Incredible strength! The attacker shattered this warden's bones with a single blow. Such brute strength is not something an ordinary Borison possesses. This is likely the work of Hulu. If I may be so bold to ask, is this Borison truly that formidable? I have lived a bit longer and engaged in a few more battles than you, Miss Lingshok. To the Alliance, Borison have always been the most formidable adversaries. And Hule is a monster feared even among his own kind. With his strength, Hule united numerous Borison packs forming a grand army of abominations of abundance. They constantly push the Alliance's armies into perilous positions. Over seven centuries ago, I followed my mentor on a campaign against the abominations. And I personally witnessed the devastation on the battlefield after Hule appeared. Even with medicinal pellets that suppress the fear caused by his lupitoxin, countless Cloud Knights succumbed to panic in the face of his murderous aura. They couldn't even raise a hand in resistance. If the former Sword Champion hadn't immobilized Hule with her Frostblade, the outcome of that fateful battle could have been very different. By the end of the battle, only a few of us remain. The Crimson Moon cast the sheen of blood on all. Everything I saw was painted dark red. If that's the case, why wasn't the beast executed instead of being imprisoned? <sighs> on the Sienjo Jumi, the judges cast those unforgivable and nearly immortal abominations of abundance into the eternal flames of the stars, reducing them to ashes. Their so-called immortality is just a facade. I mean, nothing can truly defy death, can it? I just don't understand why the Lafu kept this tumor for so long, leading to the terrible situation we're facing now. But I guess I understand. The people of the Lafu are known for their kindness. Even when faced with the malignant tumor within the Alchemy Commission, they couldn't bring themselves to cut it out. Instead, they exiled the healer who tried to solve the problem to the Sienjo Jumi. I understand if you hold grudges against me, Miss Lingshaw. I take the blame for the resurgence of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. As for why Hule was only in prison, I can shed some light on that too. I'm just a healer. I'm not familiar with the past. I'd appreciate it if you could enlighten me, General. All right. Let me tell you more about it as we go. Did this Cloud Knight also take the medicine? No. This is a Borison in disguise. A guard killed him before he could return to his original form. All these Borison are dressed in official attire. Besides the Cloud Knight, there were also two Borison disguised as members of the Skyframe Commission and the Artisanship Commission. Hmm. Whoever is providing them with official identities must hold the position of power. Let's search elsewhere. Someone bit open his arteries and drained almost all of his blood while he was still alive. <sighs> Such a cruel and ruthless act. 
Despite being a long-lived species, Orson are actually more like predatory beasts that must feed on raw blood and flesh. I've heard that Hule was deprived of food and water in the Shackling prison. It's hard to imagine how he managed to suppress his hunger for over seven centuries. Will the hostage from the Yaoqing be able to avoid being his meal? Such is the terrible nature of the abominations of abundance. We subjected him to the Forest of Swords to drain his life force. But in the end, his punishment turned into a test of our patience. Just like you said, Miss Linshaw. Casting a creature that can't be killed into a star would be a way to permanently get rid of it. But unfortunately... The Foxians didn't agree to that. Exactly. The atrocities committed by Hule went beyond mere massacres. Throughout numerous wars, we made every effort to eradicate the Borison. But Hule, with his mysterious sorcery, turned countless Foxians into his pawns. And so the Borison kept returning. The Foxians curse his name day and night, and they even use it to scare children into staying quiet. How could they grant a swift death to such a great sinner? I wonder if you know why Hule wasn't taken into custody by the Foxian majority Sienjo Yaoqing, but instead imprisoned in the Sienjo Luofu, Miss Lin Cha. As you mentioned, your mentor was an exceptional warrior and was the one who defeated Hule, an extraordinary achievement. Therefore, the Marshal placed this feral beast under the jurisdiction of the Sienjo Lafu as an honor, I assume. It seems you have a major misunderstanding about this arrangement, Miss Lingsha. Allow me to explain it to you. Yen Ching told me that an IPC ship was attacked by Borison. Is this what they were transporting on the ship? Yes. The Artisanship Commission and Alchemy Commission conducted a joint examination and found that... the parts of this machine are made from specially refined Borison bio-tissue. I heard the Intelligentsia Guild has been researching the biological properties of long-life species, hoping to make medical or combat-related discoveries. However, they haven't dared to cross any lines due to their so-called relationship with the Alliance. Perhaps to those scholars, Borison are no different from lab animals. <sighs> Maybe the Borison attacked that ship to retaliate against the Intelligentsia Guild for... experimenting on them? No. If it were only about revenge, they could just wreck the ship and destroy all the cargo, instead of allowing it to end up in the Shackling Prison. It was a deliberate display to showcase the dangerous nature of the cargo in broad daylight. This way, the cargo would end up in the Shackling Prison, serving as a tool for the prison break. This skill in exploiting the blind spots of others' mindsets is so atypical of them. Hmm. I'm afraid the IPC and the Intelligentsia Guild unknowingly became their accomplices. Watch out! This thing is still alive! Generate? Even after suffering such severe attacks? Their imitation of long-like species has crossed the line. Pretty hurt. It's time to cleanse the field. Uh, relax. <laughs> Watch your head. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off! <sighs> All in! <laughs> Stand still. Yeah! <clears throat> Time to say bye. Boom! <clears throat> Ill fate descends! <clears throat> Relax. Ah. Uh. I haven't answered my question about why Hule was imprisoned in the Lafu. 
instead of the Yao Qing general. You've been reserved in your response. Could it be that such an arrangement wasn't an honor? The reason why the Marshal didn't leave Huli on the Yao Qing lies in the very mech in front of us. Are you suggesting that there are people trying to understand Huli's secrets and use them for their own purposes? Just like with this mech? <sighs> well, I understand. I've heard that the Foxians on the Yao Qing share a bloodline with the Borsin. And just like the Borsin, some of the Foxians there experience an uncontrollable insanity called Moon Rage. The Marshal believed that this would be inhumane and no different from what the Borsin did, so... Exactly. While Borisin see Moon Rage as a blessing that unlocks their true potential, Foxians see it as an inevitable curse within their bloodline. Countless healers of the Yao Qing have attempted to unravel this mystery, but to no avail. Why can Borisin control the power of Moon Rage? Can we Foxians break free from this curse? These questions were asked frequently. Each questioner had good intentions. <sighs> but the road to catastrophe is paved with good intentions. To the Foxians of the Yao Qing, Hu Lei was not only the warhead of the Borisin, but also a monster that could be the subject of much research. Hu Lei thus became a poison that corrupted people's minds without their knowing. That's why the Marshal decided to imprison Hu Lei and the La Fu. It wasn't an honor, but rather a warning. Because such selfish pursuits in the name of good intentions once led to a tragedy on the La Fu that served as a warning to future generations. This edition of Imbibitor Lune. <laughs> By imprisoning Hu Lei and the Sienjo La Fu, the Marshal both suppressed the dangerous intentions of the Yaoqing Foxians and warned the Sienjo La Fu to refrain from repeating its mistake. That was a necessary trade off. The Sienjo Alliance is not solely about the Sienjo natives. Only when all three races, Foxian, Vidyadora, and Sienjo natives, form an alliance, will there be a promising future for all. Thank you for enlightening me. Was it for the same reason that you traded off my mentor to the Xianzhou Zhu Ming, only to stand idle and allow the resurgence of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus? You said that I couldn't bear to cut out the malignant tumor within the Alchemy Commission, but instead exiled the healer who tried to solve the problem to the Xianzhou Zhu Ming. But did your mentor tell you her good intentions? led her to perform certain healing arts on Dun Hung, who had just finished his hatching rebirth, <sighs> so that he would regain the memories of his past life. What, what did, you did you just, just say? say? She believed that restoring the High Elder's knowledge of his past life would allow the Vidyadara to resume their duty as the guardians of the Ambrosial Arbor, quelling the strife within their clan and bringing everything back on the right path. But just as I mentioned earlier, the road to catastrophe is always paved with good intentions. Since then, the Six Charioteers decided that the Alchemy Commission would no longer have a Cauldron Master. Until your arrival now. Uh, if that's the case, I should thank you for protecting my mentor by exiling her, General. Quite the contrary. I should be the one thanking you. Thanking me? All I ever want is to have a clear conscience. However, can long life species truly achieve that goal in their long drawn lives? For example, you were implicated along with your mentor and forced to leave your homeland without knowing the truth. And now, with the complicated situation in the Alchemy Commission, the Alliance has spared me a lot of trouble by sending you 
to handle this challenging task. Shouldn't I be thanking you instead? Your eloquence is indeed impressive, the Divine Foresight. He won't even leave me any excuses to hold a grudge against you. But, let me make it clear. The Alliance sent me here to handle the business impartially, not to choose sides. It doesn't matter which side you choose, Miss Lingshaw. At the end of the day, both you and I stand on the side of the Alliance, don't we? Let's keep going. These Mara-struck soldiers don't appear to be escaped prisoners. How can you tell? These soldiers are fully armed. Obviously, they didn't hastily join the battle. The messenger named Morza did say that there were two groups of attackers. And the other attackers, aside from the Borison, could hide their tracks. I believe he was referring to these people. Hide their tracks? Exactly. I've engaged with these attackers before, and they used cloud him magic to hide their presence. Without careful observation, no one can detect them. You once warned me to be cautious of the Vidyadara Elder's influence within the Alchemy Commission. Could it be? What's on your mind, Miss Lingshaw? Well, it seems that someone provided the attackers with a map of the Shackling Prison. And considering the Vidyadara's involvement in the prison's construction, it raises suspicion about their role in this. Additionally, the fact that the Borison need medicine to disguise themselves would suggest that there are still moles within the Alchemy Commission assisting them covertly. Moreover, forging official identities for the undercover Borison would require someone with significant authority. And the presence of assassins capable of using cloud him magic deepens my suspicion about the preceptors. But why would the Vidyadara collude with the Borison and Aiden who lays escape? They aim to spread chaos. They believe that only in chaos can they regain their former power and influence. Since this edition of Imbiber de Lune, the once proud dragon race has been powerless, watching their influence wane. Being a native of the Lo Fu, Miss Ling Sha, I believe you understand the implications. However, I don't think the preceptors are the true masterminds. If I'm not mistaken, the one behind all this treachery is the Lord Ravager who exploited the weaknesses within the Law of Fool and instigated the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, ultimately leading to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Fentilia. Please remember, General, that everything I've mentioned is mere speculation. We need concrete evidence for a public trial. If you want to interrogate someone within the Vidyadara's ranks, you'll need irrefutable proof. So, what's your plan, Miss Lingsha? I'll send an invitation to the Preceptors. An invitation? The Preceptors have been inviting me for a personal meeting since my arrival on Alafu. Now, I'll send them the remains of these Mara-struck soldiers and the route map I found in the prisoner's possession. Then, I'll ask them to meet me at Scale Gorge Waterscape. I'd like to hear their explanations. Good idea. If I were to take action, it might alert the true mastermind. I trust you to handle this matter, Miss Lingshaw. The internal affairs of the Vidyadara should remain under their jurisdiction. And don't worry if things don't go smoothly. Once the wolf hunt operation is over, the hidden truths will come to light. <sighs> Speaking of the wolf hunt operation, I'm truly worried about the Yao Qing messenger who was taken hostage. Hu Lei was starving in the shackling prison for centuries. I don't know if the messenger can survive in that wolf's clutches. May Rainbow's blessing keep him safe.